Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another film. So another one, office-based. Um, I thought I'd do another one whilst I'm still sort of recuperating following my recent operation. Um, again, this one is based around some requests that I've had over the last few months and that's all around sharpening and how I sharpen my images. Now, there are lots and lots of ways of sharpening images um, from Lightroom, which offers a sharpening facility, and also several ways within Photoshop, of which I've, which I've used many over the years. But there is one particular method now that I've become very comfortable with and I trust it, and I, and I want to talk you through that um, in just a second. What I will say is that with sharpening generally, I only sharpen once I know what the final output is going to be. With the likes of Lightroom, um, there's a temptation to, to sharpen every image as part of the process of processing. And uh, I don't do that. Once I've got my image complete, um, I export it as a TIFF file to an external um, hard drive. And then once I know what I'm going to use a particular image for, um, that's the point at which I then sharpen it. So let's say, for example, the image that I'm going to show you today has been requested by a customer and they want it 15 inches along the longest length. So let's jump into Photoshop now and I will talk you through that process. So this is the photograph that I want to show you the example of today. Now if you want to go and see this actual image being taken out in the field, um, I'll put a link above um, to when that was taken. It was actually taken in 2021, so a pretty recent image, one that I'm really quite pleased with. Now. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to go to image and image size at the top and uh, you can see that uh, straight out of the camera this is 25 inches along the longest edge so as I said let's assume the customer is wanting this at 15 inches along the longest edge. So that's the first step. Um, I never sharpen until such time I've got the image sized and ready to go. So I'm going to put that at 100% and um, Crucially, what I want to do with this is only sharpen the parts of the image which I feel really need the sharpening. Now, for something like this where you've got a lot of um, background detail, you don't necessarily need to sharpen all these fine leaves because they'll become too sharp um, in effect and, and they, will, they will end up just looking um, just too distracting in the background and I would rather leave them quite soft. The um, the trees for example certainly need some sharpening and also the um, the rocks and the foreground leaves particularly will probably stand a little bit of sharpening but essentially for the most part it will be the, um, the trunks of the trees and the rocks that I will be looking to sharpen um, more than anything else. So the first thing I do is go to the layers palette on the right hand side there and I duplicate the layer. I don't want to sharpen my master um, layer so I will press on a Mac is command J or control J on a PC. So I've duplicated the layer and this is the one that I'm going to apply the sharpening to. So the the sharpening method that I prefer is the high pass filter. So if I go to filter and other and high pass so you can see here, this is what we essentially get um, with the sharpening tool, is you get this here that where you can select the amount of the image that you want sharpening. Now it's really important here not to go too far. And what you're looking for is the fine edge detail. Um, you certainly don't want to be up here where the image is starting to appear through um, the sharpening layer. So you want to go back, start at the bottom, and then just work up until such time you start to see the features that you're, particularly the features that you're looking to sharpen, starting to creep through that, that layer and click OK. So the next thing to do is you've got one of two choices, certainly that I use, which is the soft light and the hard light. The hard light is a more, um, a more severe sharpening and the soft light, as the name suggests, is more gentle. Now I don't just leave it at that because clearly I've sharpened the entire image here. So what I need to do, I need to create a mask um, over the sharpening layer to hide the entire thing. So I'll go down to the bottom here, this is your layer mask option. I click that. And at the moment um, we are still seeing through the entire mask because it's white. So I need to invert that, which is Command-I 
on a, on a Mac and Control I on a PC. So now the sharpening effect is completely hidden, you can't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white paintbrush, um, just make sure that white's selected here, um, and using the brackets on your keyboard you can increase and decrease the size of your brush. Opacity, I generally have it set to 100 because I, I know exactly where I'm going to be um, going to be sharpening but you can if you want to be really um, delicate and fine-tuned with this you can adjust the opacity but for this purpose I'm just going to leave it at 100% so don't forget I'm on soft light and I'm just going to start painting with the white brush onto the black mask so make sure you're painting onto the mask and not onto the sharpening layer and just start to paint over the, um, the trunk that I want to look nice and sharp so you don't have to worry about going over the edges, it really won't be detectable um, with something like this. It's not that crucial that you stick so rigidly to the edges. Now if I just quickly turn that mask off and then back on, if you look carefully that's on, you'll see the sharpening. And certainly if you look round about here, um, when I turn it off you'll see that it will go soft. So it just got a little bit soft there and if I click it on now, it just picks up the highlights and, and just really emphasizes the detail in the back. So it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, and it's back on. So you can see the effect that it's having there. So all that I need to do now is to just work my way around the image and just sharpen all the parts of the trees that I want to be sharp. And like I said, just use the bracket key just to... Um, just to change the size of your brush as you as you're moving round, and it really is as simple as that. Nice boulder there. Let's have a look how that looks sharp. Yes, if you look, that's on, and that's off, and that's on. It really brings the boulder alive. So. I will go around this entire image and then I will show you the difference once I've completed it. Certainly picking up those leaves there really makes a difference. That's off and that's on, that's off. But as you can see, I'm not affecting anything at the background because I just don't feel that that will benefit from being sharpened. So I'll finish this and I'll see you back in a second once I've gone through the entire image. So there we have the entire image, it's taken probably no more than five minutes to go through the entire um, the entire scene and uh, I'm really happy with the results. Now the point to really emphasise here is that but, um, when I view the, the, the image on screen the sharpening really isn't that apparent but um, as I demonstrated just a second ago when you go into 100% and you turn the, the effect off and on you can see that it's clearly worked. Um, it's having a lot of effect. I've gone all along the bottom as well so if I look at the leaves for example at the bottom near the frame uh, the, the sharpening is on there and it's off and it's on and it's back off. So you can clearly sell, tell that the sharpening has, has absolutely worked 100% and it's a really nice effect. What um, you must remember is that when you're looking at it like this fully zoomed out you will not see the sharpening but by doing it at 100% at whatever output size you want to um, provide that's that's how you really must sharpen. Certainly don't sharpen with the entire image on the screen not unless you've got the, the, the image set to a screen resolution size such as 1920 along the longest edge on, on my computer which gives a full size image but if you're doing something like a print it's really important that you sharpen at 100% at the intended print size and then all that's left to do um, is, is just flatten the layer and um, in this instance all my images are 16 bits so I just go to mode take it to 8 bits and then I would save 
that for the customer. So that's it in a nutshell, very, very simple process. Like I said, there's lots and lots of different ways of sharpening, but this one I find really works for me. And as you've seen on the films, the detail, the sharpness of um, certainly the macro images really jumps out of the, out of the screen at you. And 100% I attribute that to this particular sharpening method. So that's it from me, very, very short video. I hope you found it useful. So until next time, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.